Hello viewers, welcome to my channel IITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. And in this video, I have uh, brought the proof of the relationship between Young's modulus and the shear modulus. In JE 2021, there was a question uh, which asked us to relate uh, the three moduli that is Young's modulus, shear modulus and the bulk modulus. And if you understand this video, you will be able to attempt that problem easily. I have already uh, done a video on uh, relationship between bulk modulus and Young's modulus and this proof is a bit involved but I am sure if you pay uh, careful attention uh, you will be able to understand what I wish to say in this and uh, uh, you will be able to follow the proof uh, clearly but I want your rapt attention please pay very careful attention uh, to the entire video all the way up to end ok so let me start so imagine that I have a cube so let's say this is a cube and its edge is L so L by L uh, this is the cube and this ob obviously there's an inner dimension L but uh, for our problem the, the third dimension is go not going to be very relevant here so we just uh, consider a cube of side L and we apply a shear stress on the top surface so if you apply a shear stress on the top surface let's say you are uh, you have fixed it somewhere so then in order to balance that force a shear stress will appear at the bottom surface also now you might be thinking that okay these two forces are equal and opposite so this cube will be in equilibrium but uh, that's not true because if you apply a shear stress here and a shear stress comes in response to this then there's a torque about this and how will this torque be balanced you you can feel that there will be some uh, this cube will try to press on the front edge a little bit harder and it will try to get lifted up from here we are ignoring the mass of the cube we are assuming that the stresses are sufficiently larger as compared to the mg so right now it's a simple you can think of a massless cube and it has a tendency to press against the table so and this has a tendency to get lifted up so that's why there will be a, some uh, pushing force over here and there will be some pulling force over here and this leads to what is known as complementary shear stress so to balance the torque of these applied stresses the complementary stresses will appear okay and I explained to you the mechanism how these complementary uh, stresses appear okay so as I said that uh, uh, there is a uh, when the massless block when sheared has a tendency to push harder on the front edge and lift off from the rear edge thus causing complementary shear stresses if we divide now we can divide this uh, cube into small small cubes and we can readily see that each uh, small cube will also have the same uh, shear stresses for example if I divide this into a grid like this so you can as well consider the FBD of this part so if you consider the FBD of this part there's a shearing stress over here so there should be a reverse shearing stress over here right so all these cubes have a reverse shearing stress for equilibrium and there will be uh, this type of stresses occurring on uh, all the surfaces like this okay uh, every uh, single one of them will have shear stresses as the original uh, this thing okay original cube okay now uh, suppose uh, this uh, in the process of shearing let us say this uh, edge AB advances a little bit by some amount delta L and this vertical length can almost be thought as still uh, to be L because the strain is very small okay. So let us say this angle is gamma then shear strain is what delta L by L that is tan gamma okay. So that is what I have written so shear strain is epsilon S is tan gamma that is delta L over L okay and you also know that uh, the shear modulus i'm representing shear modulus by g some books represented by eta so please don't get confused this g is same as your eta in case you are uh, used to uh, eta so so uh, this g is shear stress upon shear strain some books use tau for uh, shear stress but i'm using sigma s to represent the shear stress so shear stress upon shear strain is the shear modulus okay so that means what shear um, uh, strain is nothing but sigma s divided by capital G and this is also delta L over L. So shear strain is delta L by L and shear strain is sigma s by G. So that gives us what delta L by L is equal to sigma s by G. So this is an important equation that I will be recalling towards the end. So please bear in mind delta L by L is sigma s upon G. Okay. Now I am going to do something uh, uh, different now. Okay so pay attention to this step this is a very important step now let us find the stress on pl plane a dash c so we can draw just about any plane so we might as well draw a plane a dash c we can imagine a plane passing through points a dash and c 
and if we consider the FBD of this, so what do we get on A dash B dash? This stress is acting. So this this stress A dash B dash, and this stress uh, shear stress uh, acting on B dash C. These two shear stresses, uh, they're causing some forces on this uh, face and this face, and this angle is almost 90 degree. Why? Because the shearing is a uh, very small, so this can be still thought of as 90 degree. So to find the resultant of these forces, I can take this force and I can take this force, and then I can multiply simply by root two. Why? because uh, these two forces are almost perpendicular okay so f square plus f square whole under root becomes f root 2 okay so that's what i have done so this these two force the resultant of these two forces is along this bisector and this must be balanced by the the tensile force that is acting on the uh, plane a dash c and from this it's amply clear that this force has to be tensile right because these two forces resultant is along this side Toward upward so this has to be downward and exactly opposite to that that means what this face a dash c is in pure tensile force pure tens uh, tensile stress and now i want to evaluate quantitatively what is the value of this tensile stress in terms of sigma shear okay so i can simply uh, balance the forces in this direction uh, if i balance the forces in this direction i can readily find the relationship between sigma shear and sigma okay so uh, now force balance what does it give so this is a, this area top top surface area will be l square right so sigma s into l square is the this force sigma s into l square and similarly here also it is sigma s into l square so the resultant becomes sigma s into l square into root 2 okay as i said f square plus f square whole under root is f root 2 so sigma s into l square into root 2 all right so this is the resultant of the shear forces now what about this one so so this uh, diagonal is going to be l root 2 right so this diagonal is l root 2 and the inward depth is l so what is the area of the uh, plane a dash c the a dash c is also going into the page and the inward dimension is l and this length is l root 2 so this area becomes l root 2 into l that is l square root 2 right so the area is l root 2 into l and this shear stress is not shear stress this normal stress i am calling as sigma so by force balance sigma into l root 2 into l must be equal to sigma shear into l square root 2 and you just cancel l square on both sides and you cancel root 2 and what do you what you are left with you are left with sigma is equal to sigma s so that means what the plane a dash c has got the sh uh, same longitudinal tensile stress as the shear stresses on faces a dash b dash and b dash c i hope this is settled so sigma is equal to sigma s and this is the tensile stress okay now by similar analysis we can readily see that all planes parallel to a dash will similarly have a tensile stress given by sigma equal to sigma s for example instead of considering the entire fbd i could have just considered the fbd of this much part and by similarity you can readily see that whether you talk, talk about the plane ef or whether you talk about plane pq all these planes will have the same tensile stress and that is sigma equal to sigma s right because uh, this this is this element is just similar to the entire element so just by similarity you can say that here also if you consider this fbd also again this stress will come out to be sigma shear right so these two sigma is sigma and the exactly same way you'll get the tensile stress on the on all these planes as sigma s right now let me find out the stress on plane b dash d i want to find out the stress on plane b dash d so again once again i draw the fbd of uh, d a dash b dash so here is the fbd and sigma s is acting like this like this and the resultant is going to act like this right and to balance this on b dash d d plane there has to be compressive stress right because to balance this direction force you have to have a force in the opposite direction so we know that the plane b dash d dash will have b dash d will have a compressive stress okay now once again we can find out the compressive stress by balancing the forces so again so this is sigma s into l square this is also sigma s into l square and this angle is almost 90 degree so that means what sigma s into l square into root 2 that becomes what this should be equal to uh, here it should be not sigma s this should be sigma so i am calling this as sigma so sigma into uh, l root 2 into l once again this dimension is l root 2 and the inward dimension is L. so the area of this plane is again l root 2 into l so this again gives us what sigma is equal to sigma s that's what i have written and i deliberately chose the same symbol sigma over here as i chose uh, here this sigma and this sigma uh, i knew a priori that their, their values are uh, going to be same 
so i didn't want to uh, choose too many bring in too many symbols because already there are so many symbols in this so uh, that's why i chose the same but the difference is this plane has got a compressive stress of sigma and this sigma is same as sigma s okay so compressive stress equal to sigma s over here and tensile stress of sigma s over here so i hope this is settled the stress is on these planes right and similarly uh, if we have any planes like this parallel to this plane all these planes will similarly have the same amount of compressive stresses right just as this so you might as well make fbd of this and you know that same uh, compressive stress you are going to get on section wx same compressive stress on uh, section yz and so on right all the planes parallel to b dash d will have same compressive stress sigma or which was also proven to be equal to sigma as just a, just now now let us imagine a cube shaped element within the cube so when there was a cube you can imagine that there was a cube within the cube uh, material but when this cube stretches out so this shape also gets stretched out why does it stretch out because this cube it is uh, on this face it is uh, experiencing uh, tensile forces right just now we showed that parallel to the face a dash c there are going to be tensile stresses right and parallel to the face b dash d rather body diagonal b dash d we are going to have compressive stresses so so compression from this direction and elongation in this direction right so this uh, clearly represents the stress uh, diagram stress picture what this uh, cube shape element is going to uh, cube or cuboid whatever so this cuboid is going to face uh, these this kind of stress profile okay and this sigma is compressive and these two sigma they are tensile and their value are equal to each other and also equal to the sigma shear right so that's what i've written due to compressive stress on section alpha delta so this is alpha beta this i am calling as alpha beta gamma delta okay this cuboid i'm naming as alpha beta gamma delta so compressive stress is on section alpha delta and beta gamma so alpha delta and beta gamma compressive stress here and uh, then uh, tensile stress on sections alpha beta and gamma delta so alpha beta this has a tensile stress and gamma delta has a tensile stress okay the cuboid elongates with longitudinal strain along db dash directly direction db dash direction being same as that in the diagonal db of the cube okay so by whatever factor uh, this uh, diagonal this diagonal b dash d increases by the same factor this cube uh, dimension will also increase right why because you can always consider so many cubes uh, uh, along the diagonal and all these cubes will be stretching by the same amount by symmetry okay by similarity uh, as i uh, divided the entire rhombus into uh, you uh, recall like this several rhombus and each rhombus is behaving similarly so everywhere uh, this uh, this elongation percentage elongation will be same as the elongation in the diagonal b dash d okay so that's what i've written cuboid elongates with longitudinal strain along d dash b being same as that in the diagonal db of the cube now what is db so this was our original uh, position of the cube and this is db and db is l root 2 right this was l this was l so this is l root 2 fair enough why i am finding db because i want to find out the strain in this diagonal and for, for finding the strain in this diagonal i need to find the elongation in the diagonal and then divide it by the uh, original length of the diagonal so original length of the diagonal is l root 2 now uh, now be very careful about uh, i'm going to present how to find the elongation in this diagonal okay so what i have done i have placed the compass at point d and then opened the pencil till uh, b and then taken an arc so that dh and db are equal so if these two are equal then what is the elongation so elongation is simply b dash h right so b dash h this length is the elongation in the diagonal right and how to find this length you know that uh, this whole angle is almost 90 degree and this diagonal is bisecting this angle so this angle is almost 45 degree right and that angle is 45 degree and this is delta l and i have dropped the uh, arc and arc is almost perpendicular on this uh, diagonal right so that means what b dash h is nothing but delta l into cos 45 degree right i hope you followed the logic b dash h must be this delta l into this cos of this angle which is also 45 degree right so that's so we now draw an arc and let it intersect db dash at h as i as i told you due to small strain angle b b dash d is 45 degree b b dash d this angle is 45 degree and elongation the diagonal b dash h is b dash b b dash b this into cos 45 degree so this is the 
elongation right so b dash h it simply becomes now b dash b is delta l so this is uh, delta l into cos 45 degree right so delta l cos 45 degree okay b dash b cos 45 degree which is cos 45 is 1 by root 2 so elongation is delta l upon root 2 okay so this is the original length and this is the elongation so what is the strain in this just divide equation 8 and equation 7 so you get the strain as b dash h upon db so b dash h upon db this is the strain right and that comes out to be how much that is delta l over 2l so there's 1 by root 2 over here and this l root 2 uh, there so divide so you get uh, delta l by 2l okay this is the longitudinal strain and uh, uh, you see uh, we have uh, the cuboid like this so if this cuboid were only subjected to sigma on both sides its elongation would be simply percentage elongation will be sigma by y but apart from these two elongating uh, stresses th there are also compressive stresses over here right and because of Poisson's ratio there will be effect on the lateral strain because of these compressions also these compressions will also lead to elongation in these two directions right so i just uh, took the uh, Poisson's ratio nu and uh, into sigma by y so this compression leads to this elongation so total elongation percentage elongation here or fractional elongation or you can say longitudinal strain total becomes sigma upon y plus nu times sigma upon y so this is the longitudinal strain right and this is also delta l over 2l see uh, just now we had said epsilon longitudinal is delta l. so delta l upon 2l is uh, now sigma is also equal to sigma shear so i can take sigma outside or uh, sigma was equal to sigma s also so i can take sigma s outside so this becomes sigma s upon y into 1 plus nu and therefore just rearrange this you get delta l by l is equal to 2 sigma s this 2 goes there so 2 sigma s upon y into 1 plus nu okay so this is also delta l by l this for this uh, cuboid now this is delta l by l using this logic and uh, earlier we had also find, found delta l by l using the shear uh, modulus okay so where is the equation 2 you can see this was the equation 2 i told you that i'll be referring to it later on so delta l by l delta l by l also equal to sigma s upon g and later on we have proved that delta l by l is what um, twice sigma s upon y into 1 plus nu so now equating their rhs what do we get sigma s upon g should be equal to 2 sigma s upon y into 1 plus nu now uh, you just uh, uh, cancel off sigma s on both sides and just rearrange this take uh, y to that side and g over this side so you get g is equal to y upon twice uh, 1 plus nu and that is what we intended to prove so i hope uh, you understood the concept involved here and uh, uh, if you like my presentation please do give a thumbs up to my video and please do share this video as much as possible with your friends uh, in various uh, study groups that you might be part of maybe whatsapp groups or uh, discord servers or um, uh, maybe telegram groups wherever you are, have uh, study uh, groups please share my video and uh, thanks a lot for watching this video god bless you all see you in the next video thank you